Hello everyone, today I will be making a short video to introduce you to a very useful resource that you can use to study rocks in both hand specimens and thick sections online. Because as we all are aware, things are a bit difficult at the moment to access laboratories, to access samples. So this particular web page is really good because we have a lot of high definition scans of rocks and thin sections. All right, so the web page that you want to have a look at would be the virtualmicroscope.org. And on this web page, we have collections that are arranged in place, in time, and in focus. So in focus shows very specific collections, and in time is arranged by the time at which the rocks were formed and in place shows the different places where these rocks were collected from. All right, so let's move on to the collections tab. So as you can see, this collection includes a full range of rock types native to earth and even beyond. So we have a collection called the UK virtual microscope, which is what we're gonna look at in a bit. We also have the Apollo lunar missions, we have meteorites, we have cabinet of curiosities. There are quite a few collections here available, so feel free to explore. Um, but we're going to start off with the UK virtual microscope. Okay, so here is the page that you will get. The UK virtual microscope consists of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks that have been collected around the UK. So if you look here, we have a list of approximately six pages of rock samples. And because my lecture recently has been on the introduction to metamorphic rocks, let's have a look at examples that are related to metamorphic processes. Okay, so we have a calc silicate nice. Let's have a look at this one. So when you click on the name of a rock, you will be taken to a page where it has a fact sheet. So you get to read more about the rock. And so this rock in particular is a coarse grained calcite rich bandit gneiss from South Harris in the Western Isles of Scotland. And it has rich bands, rich in calcite, olivine and plagioclase. And it says here that also visible are bands rich in quartz, feldspar and amphibole. All right, and with every sample, we have a list on the bottom which tells you what kind of theme it's part of, what type of rock it is, and the rock forming minerals that are of interest. So before we look at the thin section, let's have a look at the rock. So here we have a really high definition scan of the hand specimen and you can view this in 3D. So let's have a look at the controls. The bottom slider is used to zoom in and out and the left and right arrows are used to turn the stage on which the sample is placed. So you can choose which face to look at for you to have a better understanding of the specimen. All right, so that's our hand sample. Next, we can have a look at it under the microscope, under our virtual microscope. So like um, a proper microscope, you will be able to look at these rocks under plain polarized light and cross polarized light. And that can be found here in the bottom left hand corner. So the default would be in plain polarized light and you can switch it to cross polars. And the bottom slider again functions as a zoom toggle. And you can also do this by using the pinching method if you're operating 
this page on a touchscreen device. So as you can see, you're already seeing quite a lot of detail at this level of zoom. And on the top and left hand side of your screen, you will find a ruler that adjusts itself as you zoom in and out so you know the size of the minerals. And if you wanted to know the size of a mineral or a feature in your thin section in particular, you would click on the measure tool and just click and drag across the mineral of interest. And there you will have your measurements. It can also measure angles. So again, you just need two lines and it'll measure the angle for you. And that is the measure tool. And another useful tool in this particular view would be the crosshairs. So if you have a feature of interest, let's say you're interested in this very specific quartz, specifically here, then you would drag the cursor down drag the crosshairs and it will let you know where specifically this piece of quartz is. And if you would like to share this particular view, just click on share and it will give you a link to share it with. So if you zoom a bit further down, you will see that the coordinates have been embedded in this link as well as the zoom level. So you won't have to send the link and then tell somebody to go to exactly 31.07 and 21.19 millimeters because it's already embedded it in the share link. All right, so let's just park this back here and zoom back out. So with all of the thin sections, usually the collections have specified some highlights to look at. And if you click on them, you can see that it gives you these views of the rock in plain polarized light and cross polarized light the way you will see under a microscope. And like a normal microscope, you're actually able to turn the stage on these views compared to the overview that we had earlier. So with this, you get to look at the extinction in minerals and the colors in minerals as you would a normal microscope. And this would help you in your identification of minerals and textures. So here in the middle, you will see that they have the degree at which you've turned the stage at, so you'll never lose your place. So just in case you really liked the angle on this one, you would know where to go back to just in case you needed it. And as always, you can share the view that you've set here. And if you go towards the end, you will see that those are the coordinates. It has your zoom level and it has the degree at which you've turned your stage. So that is pretty handy. And OK, so let's go back. Let's go back and look at another rock. So like I said, there are about six pages worth of rocks and they cover everything from sedimentary to igneous to metamorphic. So you can have a look at all these different types of rocks right at your fingertips. Okay, so this is a particularly interesting rock that is relevant to what we've learned in our lectures. Um, so this is an example of phyllite from Ireland. And here we can see that it's mentioned that the thin section, the microtexture is dominated by muscovite and quartz grains formed during low grade metamorphism. So it still reflects its original sedimentary layering. And the bands were deformed and crenellated later by folding and deformation. So these two things are something that you will learn in the lectures after mine, so in the next week when you learn about metamorphic textures. But nonetheless, this would be a pretty interesting thin section to look at. So let's jump in and look at the microscope view. So like our previous ones, we have the 
plane polarized light view here. And as you can see, this is composed of mostly felsic minerals because of how light it is. And if we go into cross polars, there you have it. We have our quartzes. And if we zoom in, we'll probably see our micas. Okay, let's just zoom in real quick. So as you can see, you can have so much detail at this level of zoom. And this is only halfway through. So here we have our quartzes and you can make out the muscovite micas in between and you can see that the minerals are aligned and this is a result of directed pressure as you can remember which forms foliated rocks and the waviness that you're seeing on screen at the moment that is characteristic of crenulation cleavage and you will be learning more about that in the textures of metamorphic rocks in the week to follow. So let's have a look at the highlighted bits that the curators have chosen. Okay, so this is rotation one. As you can see, it is pretty deformed, but you can make out the foliation of quartz and muscovite in the sample. So as I was saying, you can turn the stage and you can see the undulose extinction, which is pretty characteristic of quartzes and the colors of the muscovite mica. Let's have a look at the second view that they've selected. Again, you can see very, very clearly the muscovite mica and their colorful bands and the quartzes and their undulose extinction. So these are all very good samples to look at, very good to get a grasp of the different minerals present in different metamorphic rocks. So have a look at the, the examples, have a look at the different collections, and if you can, if you can, and I'm pretty sure you will have um, exercises on this, try to draw the things that you see in these examples. So try to draw the hand specimen, try to have a go at drawing the thin sections, but also remember as part of our discussion we talked about how scientists are really good at collecting a lot of information but they need to be better at presenting information in a way that is useful and beneficial. So when you're drawing minerals and when you're drawing rocks, remember that it is more important to present the relationship between minerals and the relationship between the formation processes, for example, or layering in the rock. It is these details that you need to capture more than trying to make your drawing a pretty and artistic one. It's about imparting information and that is the most important thing to do. So as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but also have fun and explore this page. Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so I will be exploring this page and you can explore this page too. And I will see you when I see you. Thank you for listening.